So here we are, Jeremy from Live Up Roadcraft, Katoomba. Welcome to Katoomba BP. We're gonna be going from here in Katoomba, through Sydney, up through Nabiak, up through, uh, what's it called? Oh, not Gloucester, Grafton. That's what I was trying to think of. And then up to Tweed Heads and uh, Coolangatta Beach in Queensland. We're gonna to touch the Queensland shore. I'm gonna come all the way back, 1,785 kilometers. We've got a couple of bailouts in case this gets a little crazy. So uh, just give you a quick look. This is what we're riding off today. It's a Kawasaki GTR 1000. Oh, bike 1998, inline four carbies. And, uh, and we're decked out. We've got all the gear we need. So what I'll be doing is I'll give you some updates as we go around, as we go through the trip. Let so that truck go past. How good's the sound counseling on the GoPro? We don't know. Anyway, so there we go. I will catch up with you in about four hours time when we're pulling into Nabiak. And uh, hope you enjoy the time-lapse footage. Now I know you're wondering why would any sane human being ride more than 1600 kilometers in a single day or over a thousand miles? Well the answer is an IBA certification. The IBA is the Iron Butt Association, it's a worldwide organization that certifies rides that are in excess of a thousand miles or 1600 kilometers and they're there to promote safe long distance riding. In fact, over 50,000 riders have actually taken part in IBA certification. And after having driven and ridden professionally for over a decade and been on the roads for over 20 years, I thought this would be a nice test for myself. So I decided to lay down a course of Katoomba to Coolangatta and all the way back home and see if I would be successful as one of those IBA riders. Now I decided to depart Katoomba at 8 p.m. in the evening in hope that being waking up late in the afternoon would enable me to be wide awake through the evening when my circadian rhythms would like me to be asleep. And typically I would tell people this is not the greatest of ideas. However, in my case, I actually drive at night in taxis and have done for a lot of years. And this has somewhat enabled me to be very aware of being tired and, and fatigued through the course of the evening. So with all of this in mind, I decided to take off and ride the first part of the journey through Sydney in the middle of the evening. Now, Sydney is an absolutely gorgeous place to ride through at night. There's something special seeing the lights of the skyline and the highways as you're riding through them in the absolute dark. And as I move down the mountain, across the M4, up onto the M7, down the M2 and through Thornley, I got to see a lot of the city still being asleep, but with all the lights still on. And it's an incredibly pretty thing to actually witness. So as I'm going to move further up the central coast on our way to Nabiak, hopefully with any luck, this journey is going to be a successful one, but you're just going to have to keep watching to find out and let's see how we go on the way to Nabiak. So here we are at Nabiak. Let me just turn the bike off. We're here at Nabiak. This is uh, 300 and 
58 kilometers in, I think. Anyway, it's uh, just after midnight, so my wrist is a little sore, bum's a little sore, but uh, yeah, Nabiak. Not too bad. It's uh, done a little bit better than I thought I would. Uh, you know, we're only in the early days. This is gonna take a long time to do this ride, so uh, who knows? I'll probably be crying on the way back at Bulladilla, but uh, no, we're doing all right so far. This is not too bad. It's a warm night, but rained on really badly, but big fairing on the bike kind of, this kind of fixes most of the problem, this big fairing. So uh, yeah, the rain wasn't too bad. And uh, I don't know what else to say. Just, it's a lot of staring, a lot of staring at nothing because it's dark. So traveling at night's a bit boring, uh, but you know, avoiding trucks, being safe. I don't know, it's just one of those things. Anyway, hopefully I'll have some more. By the time we get to Cool and Gather, I'll have more to talk about. So anyway, there's the update. Enjoy, we'll go back to the ride. One of the most beautiful things I find when you're out riding outside of the city, especially late at night, are the stars. The further you get away from the cities, the more the stars start to reveal themselves. There's the brilliant Milky Way, and I know it sounds funny, but there's just something magical in my opinion. Standing outside where there's no other light, being able to stare at those little tiny dots in the sky. And although the road leaving Nabiak on my way to South Grafton is very quiet, not many people at all, it is definitely a wonderful moment of solace. Now, in this part of the journey, I actually came across another motorcyclist and he and I decided to team up and ride with each other for a large section, which actually made it a little bit easier for the trucks and the other road users to spot us because there were two of us. And you gotta remember when you're a small vehicle, everyone else in the night may be a little tired, maybe they've been driving all day, and it's just a nice way to create a little bit more safety as you're traveling. So as we move on, onwards and upwards to Grafton, enjoying the night, uh, getting through the rain and uh, hopefully we'll get to Grafton in one piece. We'll just have to wait and see. made it all the way to South Grafton. We're at uh, South Grafton BP. Yeah. And, uh, we are now at, let's have a look here. We're at, what about, quarter past four in the morning. So we've been going about eight and a quarter hours. Um, had a couple of stops on the way out here. Uh, bike's going well. We're clicking over 650 odd Ks or so. Um, now we're on the way to Tweed Heads to the end of the journey. Well, to the furthest point away in the journey. And then we're gonna turn around and come back. Met some couple of interesting people. Some uh, had a kid with a car failure where he's blue fuses. I had to help him out for a couple of minutes. Um, some nice people who are traveling back up the coast. Everyone seems to have their eyeballs fall out when I mention what I'm doing, which is a fascinating thing. Um, but yeah, lots of trucks, but the trucks pretty easy to handle. Uh, legs just starting to get a little sore, so that's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna take an hour's break up at Tweed to say hello to a mate, so hopefully that'll be all right. Um, yeah, it's, uh, you just move your ass in every position you can imagine. Lean on the tank, sit back off the tank, hold the holding the uh, throttle in different ways. I don't know. Nine million things for whatever you can think you could possibly do. But anyway, I don't know what I look like, but hopefully I look all right, at least in one shape. Because I'm not even halfway quite yet, but we'll get there soon enough. And uh, hopefully it'll all be good. Anyway, catch up with you when we hit Tweed and uh, Cool and Gatter. All right, have fun guys. Enjoy the uh, scenery.
As we leave Grafton, we start to enter the New South Wales Northern Rivers. Now for me, I find this one of the most beautiful parts of New South Wales. I've been out into the outback, I've been all sorts of places. However, one of the most amazing things about the Northern Rivers is just the amount of greenery with the volcanic mountains that exist. It is some of, in my opinion, the most beautiful parts of New South Wales. And I just find that with the nice warm temperatures, this evening I've been very lucky, 24 degrees overnight, and with the sky starting to just light up with the daybreak, this has to be one of the most beautiful moments on a peaceful road to be riding, where you can just enjoy the scenery. And as we're traveling up, I keep thinking to myself, we can make it to Coolangatta, we can make it to Coolangatta, because you know what? This is just an adventure, it's just a journey, and I hope you're still with us. I still hope that you're rooting for me, because at the end of the day, we're going to make it to Coolangatta. I just know we're going to be able to make it to Coolangatta. Almost before I know it, 11 hours has passed and here we are, the Queensland border from Katoomba all the way to Queensland. So excited to see this moment. As we head down, let's take a break. Beautiful Coolangatta Beach. Something like 11 hours later, after leaving, uh, we are now at Coolangatta Beach. Sorry about the, uh, the wind, I'm sure that's going to be a pain in the ass. But anyway. So yeah, that was, um, I don't know how good the audio is going to be for this, but anyway, that was, that was one hell of a ride to get here. Now we turn around and we go all the way back to the mountains. So uh, another 11 odd hours in this. Uh, I should land about six, uh, seven o'clock at night. Um, but uh, it'll be nice. We'll get to see exactly what I rode through in the darkness on the way home. Um, doing all right. I'm starting to notice, you know, little bits being sore, having to stretch a lot more. I started stretching at the start of this trip. Um, but I'm starting to notice it's like little bits getting a little sore. Um, <coughs> it's really just move a lot and don't let your ass sit in one position for too long. But uh, no, it's, uh, we're now in Queensland. So we rode all the way from Katoomba to Queensland overnight. Now we're going to go all the way back again. Yeah, I say that and it sounds absolutely stupid. But, you know, I guess it is what it is. It's, uh, it's an iron butt. That's uh, just what they are, saddle sores. And... Uh, Anyway, I don't know what else to say. Um, met another guy on a bike. Kind of that, that guy kept me company for a while. Lots of roadworks. Oh, roadworks are doing my head in. And uh, outside of that, it's uh, it's just a long, long ride, to be honest. But it's interesting to be sitting on beach on Queensland after leaving last night. Now sitting on beach in Queensland. Anyway, I will catch up with you guys again uh, when I do a fuel stop closer to, uh, to Sydney. All right, guys. Enjoy. So I thought I'd... Uh just uh, pay homage to my little Don Don. This, this is the bike that has hauled my ass 
800 and something ridiculous kilometers. It shows 900 on the odometer, but it's uh, 800 and something, just in case while we're, it's still a cool and gather by the way, which is uh, good work Queensland, you've fenced off your own beach. Um, for anyone who's wondering, got a uh, mobile phone mount there, got the phone going. Uh, so far we are at 900 and, I don't know, 16, roughly. I uh, just reset the trip meter, it's just around the corner. And uh, you guys, I don't know how we're doing it, we're uh, running power up out of the side of the bike, around and up and in with my wonderful gaff tape. Gaff tape fixes everything, except my bum gaff tape. My, my Tukas gaff tape is coming off really badly. Um, but yeah, we're running the GoPro in here, so that's how you're seeing this one. And uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's Don Don. So, uh, anyway, I just thought, oh, I haven't actually told you about the bike, but uh, it's doing well. It's, uh, it's an interesting process to ride this long and uh, going home, yeah, quite crazy. So anyway, let's uh, see how it goes. And I just realized how bad my beard looks. So this is gonna be an interesting thing. See how bad the beard is by the end. All right, see you guys. This is the moment where the sun and the heat of the morning begin to ramp up and I find myself having to manage my speed and my fatigue even more. Having been on the road for hours and hours, the question comes, will we make it all the way home safely? With the boys in blue hiding around every corner waiting for that Muppet to come past too fast, I find myself having to retain focus talking to myself in my helmet and just trying to make sure that I keep my position adjusting so that I don't get too sore. But it's nice to be able to watch what we row through in the dark and some of the more beautiful scenery again as the Northern Rivers are some of the most beautiful parts of scenery in uh, New South Wales as far as I'm concerned. So we're at uh, Coffs Harbour United, hiding around the corner. It's the only place that's got some shade at the moment. It's uh, oh, it's about 11:40, and uh, it's uh, it's exhausting. Uh, my shoulder hurts. My right hand hurts from the throttle. Um, uh, my back hurts, and I can't think so much. I don't have additional thought. Like I'm, I'm fine riding. Pay attention to the environment, the bike's still doing well. Um, I did lose about an hour of footage. I uh, pulled over, I just, I was so hot and it was just cooking me. And I had to pull over for a second and just kind of get some air and take the helmet off. And uh, you know, as things happen, this is a big ride, I got a lot of stuff going on and I just I must have forgot to hit the record button or something, probably my fault. Maybe the GoPro overheated, maybe I forgot to hit the record button. Nonetheless, it's recharged yourself, which is really good. Um, so we're going to be heading into Bulladila, uh, Bulladila and uh, into there and that's probably going to take uh, about three hours. It's another 290 odd kilometers. Um, I'll have another quick little break halfway down there 
I think all I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make it down into Thornlea first and uh, hit the saddle saw at about 1,680 Ks. Um, and instead of trying to push through back into Katoomba and peak hour traffic, I'm actually just gonna find somewhere with air conditioning. I'm gonna sit down in Thornlea and just relax um, and just, uh, just, just be human for a moment. It's got to the point where this is a long ride, it's a warm day been going a long, long time. You know, I think I've been going, what time is it now, 12. I've been going about 16 hours now on the ride. Um, it's just unbelievable. I've clocked up 1,215 on the odometer, so that's probably about 1,180 or something, or 1,150 or so, real kilometers. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's an interesting thing. It's, you, you end up riding and uh, there's nothing else you're just focused on the road focused on your speed focused on what everyone else is doing focused on your feeling and your body and making sure everything's going it's every bit of energy I've got is going into actually just riding and staying safe and being all right it's uh, not really much else um, you know it's so funny Coffs Harbour you would think it's a beautiful place but really you just sit next to a highway but uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll get down to Bullet Dealer and uh, hopefully we'll be all right. Bike's going well, as I said. I'm doing pretty good. 16 hours, 1100 plus Ks, 1200 Ks. I'm in one piece. Um, I didn't think I'd be that way. So anyway, that's where we're at. Down to Bullet, uh, Bullet Dealer. <laughs> Not hating it yet. <laughs> Maybe by Bullet Dealer, I might be hating this. But uh, yeah, we're gonna pull it short and then just go slightly over the 24 hours to get home to Katoomba. Uh, just got to be safe, you know, it's not worth trying to push it and having something go wrong in the last couple of hundred K So anyway, I'll see you guys soon One of the most amazing things on this ride that I've noticed so far is getting to see the actual damage that the New South Wales bushfires have actually had on the towns on all of the little stops along my way on this journey. The bush is normally so thick that you can only see a couple of trees in off the highway but with all the trees burnt down, you can actually see so far into the bush that it begins to reveal some of its secrets. And one of the good things is to see some of the bush that burnt out only a month or two ago is already starting to regenerate, giving us hope that the flora is coming back and hopefully that wildlife to some degree will retain its ability to stay there as it is one of the most amazing things about Australia is how much beautiful flora and fauna we have. So as we push on on our way down to Bulladila, fighting exhaustion, fighting the tiredness, fighting the aches, fighting the mind games, will we make it? Will we make it all the way back to Sydney? You're just going to have to wait, watch and see. So we're at Bulladilla. This is uh, Bulladilla BP. We made it. And uh, I would have to probably say, not hating on this, but uh, I won't do another one of these, that's for sure. I wouldn't do this again. It's brutal. Um, everything's sore, just tired. I'm at the point where I'm just having to rest for 
exorbitant amounts of time, but I've got a buffer to make my 1,680 or kilometers. So you get to a point where you think, I'd rather be late and get there in one piece than to try and meet some imaginary goal. You know, um, but I can definitely see why people don't, um, why they don't do the last diary entry when they do one of these trips. It's just brutal. It's just absolutely brutal. Uh, mentally, physically, machine-wise, uh, it's just hardcore. So, um, so it'll probably take me 20 minutes plus just to conjure up the, um, the fortitude to actually hit the record button. The guy's leaving in his full drive. Um, cool thing about Bullet Dealer, really mad-ass full drive here. Everyone's got a nice 4 Um So yeah, I would have to say that uh, this is this is hard. This is physically and mentally hard. Um, I haven't been tested like this for a long time. So uh, yeah, beard's probably looking horrible too. But anyway, um, yeah. Oh, look, I just I don't I can't think very much. Just we're here. We're in one piece. Good old Don Don's doing his thing and uh, being a great bike. So uh, we're just going to take our time roll back slowly and take another break before we get back down to Sydney uh, yeah, on the other side of Newcastle and then have a break there and have a break in Sydney I'll probably just call the trip at the end in Sydney and rest there until I'm safe to ride back up the mountain yeah I, I, I wish I could say more uh, I wish I was more talkative but I'm just gonna ramble because I'm just tired and uh, Anyway, you know, I'm like that far away from doing uh, the mountains to Queensland and back in a single day and surviving it, which is a lot harder than you guys in America think it is, because in America you can do 130 kilometers an hour on your uh, interstates and I've had to do some back roads and 40k an hour work zones and stuff, so it's been brutal, brutal. I'll talk about it, you know, another time, but uh, yeah, anyway, by the time you see this episode, you'll uh, have a better picture. So, I hope you're enjoying this. Um, oh, this is one of the fucking hardest things I've ever done. And yeah, like, yeah, oh. see, there's no words. Anyway, guys, I'll catch up with you in Sydney. Having had my moment of being so close and yet feeling so far from home, we push on from Bulladeela down towards Sydney again. It's been a very, very long ride taking my backpack off just to try and take some weight off the shoulders and again trying to reduce anything that's causing more fatigue. Uh, this has been one of the most beautiful rides I have ever done, and although I've been on a freeway for a lot of it, it's still amazing to see all the scenery change and having watched the entire day transpire. I've been very lucky with the weather, and uh, I hope to see a beautiful sunset as we're rolling into Sydney. outside of Sydney in uh, Brooklyn which is outside of north of Sydney in Barara um, before I head back into the Sydney carnage of traffic and uh, there's one thing I must say I really don't like about the saddle saw and that is is that you don't get time to just enjoy like look at this oh. there you go right there and for all it's worth that enjoying nothing I'm just sitting here in a rush on the saddle saw or on any trip you don't get to enjoy 
the actual nature of where you're going and having a look at and uh, it can be somewhat boring and too much whereas uh, another bike to stand up <laughs> whereas sometimes you just want to enjoy the uh, scenery take your time so, you know, don't always be in a hurry take your time life's too short to uh, waste it just getting somewhere enjoy the journey that's uh anyway it's one thing i just wanted to say and uh i really hope you've enjoyed this i'll uh do a quick update when i hit the uh thornley bp uh which i'll be at i don't know very shortly and uh that'll be the end of the saddle saw anyway guys have fun Finally, we're making our way on the very last leg all the way into Sydney. I can't believe I'm doing this, crossing the 1600 kilometre mark with a thousand mile mark. After almost 22 and a bit hours, I'm exhausted. This has been a very tough physical and emotional day, but we're successfully doing it. And just like I said, good planning and being prepared to take your time and get there safe is so, so important. I hope you have enjoyed this show, my look back of time-lapse of over 1,600 kilometres, in fact, 1,685 kilometres. Over the next hour, I made it my way slowly back home and after spending over $165 on fuel, stopping off a couple of times, we have completed our Iron Butt Saddle Saw 1610 or Saddle Saw 1000 miles. What an achievement to actually do. Remember, no matter what, who you are, what you drive, to always stay calm, pay attention, and keep safe. And until next time... <laughs> <laughs>